so this is a poem called um, Hello, I am your waiter tonight and my name is Dimitri. <laughs> I am your waiter tonight and my name is Dimitri is more or less the title of a poem by John Ashbery and has no investment in the fact that you can get an adolescent of the human species to do almost anything. And when adolescence in the human species ends is what the fat man in the Maltese Falcon calls a nice question, sir, a very nice question indeed. Which is why they are tromping down a road in Fallujah in combat gear and 115 degrees of heat this morning and why a young woman is strapping 20 pounds of explosives to her mortal body in Jerusalem. Dulce et decorum est pro patria mori. Have I mentioned that the other law of human nature is that human beings will do anything they see someone else do, and someone will do almost anything? There is probably a waiter in this country so clueless that he wears a t-shirt in the gym that says, da meat tree, not our protagonist, American amnesia is such that he may very well be the great grandson of the elder Karamazov brother who fled the Midwest with his girlfriend Grushenka. He never killed his father. It isn't true that he killed his father, but his religion was that woman's honey-colored head, an ideal tangible enough to die for, and he lived for it in Buffalo, New York, or Sandusky, Ohio. He never learned much English, but he slept beside her in the night until she was an old woman who still knew her way to the Russian pharmacist in a Chicago suburb where she could buy sachets of the herbs of the Russian summer that her coarse white nightgown smelled of as he fell asleep, though he smoked Turkish cigarettes and could hardly smell. Grushika got two boys out of her body. One was born in 1894, the other in 1896. The elder, having died in the mud at the Battle of the Somme from a piece of shrapnel manufactured by Alfred Nobel. Metal traveling at that speed works amazing transformations on the tissues of the human intestine. The other son worked construction the year his mother died. If they could have, they would have, if not filled, half filled her coffin with the petals of buckwheat flowers from which Crimean bees made the honey bought in the honey market in St. Petersburg, not far from the place where Raskolnikov, himself an adolescent male, couldn't kill the old money lender without killing her saintly sister but killed her nevertheless in a fit of guilt and reasoning which went something like this. Since the world evidently consists in the ravenous pursuit of money and power and in the exploitation and prostitution of women, except the holy self-sacrificing ones who make you crazy with guilt, and since I am going to be the world, I might as well take an ax to the head of this woman who symbolizes both usury and the guilt, the virtue and suffering of women induces in men and be done with it. I admit the syntax of that sentence, like the intestines slithering from the hands of the startled boys clutching belly wounds at the psalm, has escaped my grip. Where was I? Not far from the honey market, which is not far from the hay market. It's important to remember that the teeming cities of the 19th century were site central for horse whipping. Human beings had domesticated the race of horses some 10 centuries before, harnessed them, trained them, whipped them mercilessly for recalcitrance in Vienna, Prague, Naples, London, and Chicago, according to the novels of the period, which may have been noticing this for the first time or registering an actual statistical increase in either human brutality or the insurrectionary impulse in horses, which were fed hay, so there was, of course, in every European city a hay market, like the one in which Raskolnikov kissed the earth from a longing for salvation. Grushenka, though Dostoevsky made her, probably did not have much use for novels of ideas. Her younger son, a master carpenter, eventually took a degree in engineering from Bucknell University. He married an Irish girl from Vermont who was descended from the gardener of Emily Dickinson, but that's another story. Their son died in Iwo Jima, gangrene, but he left behind, curled in the body of the daughter of a Russian Jewish cigar maker from Minsk, the fetal curl of a being who became the lead dancer in the Cleveland Ballet. 
radiant Tanya, who turned in a bad knee sometime in the early 1971, just before her brother aided at Cow Dai Jim for marriage and motherhood, which brings us to our waiter, Dimitri, who you will have noticed is not in Baghdad. He doesn't even want to be an actor. He's been offered the role, a role in several major motion pictures and refused them because he is, in fact, under contract to John Ashbery, who is a sane and humane man and has no intention of releasing him from the poem. You can get killed out there. He's allowed to go home for his mother's birthday, and she has described to him on the phone, a cell phone, He's walking down Christopher Street with such easy bearing, he could be St. Christopher bearing innocence across a river. Having come across a lock, the delicate curl of a honey-colored lock of his great-grandmother's Crimean honeybee pollen, Russian spring wildflower sachet scented hair in the attic, where released for her in the July heat and raftery midsummer dark, the memory of an odor like life itself carried to her on the wind. Here is your sea bass with a light lemon and caper sauce. Here is your dish of raspberries and chocolate. Notice their subtle transfiguration of the colors of excrement and blood. And here, Earth's apotheosis are the flecks of crystallized lavender that stipple it. Thank you very much. <laughs>